What's going on, everybody? This is Oliver Twix, your nerd boy cutie reporting for duty here to do the Lord's work once again. And I am joined by someone who I think is a drag race legend. Listen, I don't give a fuck what a bitch say. Top five lip syncs of all time on drag race. You must include Dita Ritz. This will be by Natalie Cole in the top five. It's Dita Ritz, everybody. Hey. <laughs> Everybody go. 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 How are you? I am doing okay, and I am so gay right now because I'm joined by Dieter. Listen, I know we we met before, and we've talked here and there on social media. I just did your show of Black Girl Magic. Oh, uh, I never told you this when, when when even when I first met you, I remember being a young gay girl. I think I was still in high school. I know I just aged everybody. But it's okay. I still was in high school when I was laying in the bed sneaking to watch RuPaul's Drag Race. And I saw Dieter Ritz in this oh robotic God. gold short bob eat that lip sync. And I was in my bed screaming on the inside because I didn't want to I didn't want to let nobody see I was watching Drag Race. <laughs> <laughs> that is always so I I love hearing the stories people tell me like where they were when that um happened and it it's it still makes me feel good that people when they watch that lip sync it makes them feel good and there are people who are like i watch the lip sync daily or if um you know they talk about like the lip sync for your life so like you know i was trying to explain this to my mom and you know i showed her your lip sync kind of was as the first thing like it, it in a season four is like the season everyone loves to watch mm -hmm. so i am just very blessed that you know I've learned a lot throughout the years of being a drag race girl and, and, and kind of um, acclimating myself to, I guess, like fame and celebrity. But I'm so thankful that, like, I was on that iconic of a season. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it is it's it set me up for, you know, to be, I guess, um, the 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 legend and the icon that is Dita Ritz. So, um, yeah, I, every time I hear I love hearing people's stories about that lip sync because it makes people so happy. And that's that, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I try to aim for when I perform. I just like to make people feel good. Listen, I would love to see you on the All Stars. I wanna see right. I want I wanna see I wanna see Dieterits in the new millennia. That's what I wanna see. Well, you know, we I, you know, we're trying to get it, we're trying to get that to happen. You know, I have definitely mentioned it to producers and I definitely try to make myself very well known. Um, you know, I've talked to some girls who have done All Stars and they have backed me like very much like I agree. I want you. I dropped your name. Um, and, you know, I'm also just trying to let it be known that I want it to because, you know, a closed mouth don't get fed. Hey, so, so, you know, I have to open my mouth and say that if I want something. So, yeah, I always just tell the fans, like, literally just tweet World of Wonder and Drag Race and just always keep my name, which people have been doing a really great job. I mean, it's it's a daily thing. I always see hashtag Dieter Ritz for All Stars and, you know, this I, I see the love, so just keep it coming, you know, and that's how producers work. I think you know that working mm -hmm. in, you know, entertainment is just all about what, you know, we work in this world now where it's about the followers, it's about the number, it's about they want to see what are the, mm -hmm. you know, what do you have to offer? So I always just tell the fans, like, keep hashtagging, keep bringing it up. Because I believe it's going to happen. I just think that there are so many of us drag race girls now. So, you know, and and they just maybe sometimes have their eye on, you know, other girls. So you have to remind them, like, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> World of Wonder, hi, am I bitch, okay? <laughs> Please, honey, yes. Let me get a little bit of that good old new drag race coin, honey. <laughs> okay. Speaking of getting a wow check, we are talking about episode four of the yes. T.S. Madison experience. How have you been enjoying the show so far? Oh, my God. Like, okay, so, you know, I've known Maddie for years. I mean, I met Maddie during my season of Drag Race, and she's always oh. been so amazing and inspiring. And even when I see her, you know, 
doing things online or even going through crazy moments in her life, I've always messaged her and been like, man, I just like admire your strength. Um, and so I've just really, it's really been fun to actually see the behind the scenes because to me, she seems like she's always got it together. And so Aww. I think it's fun to see like this really raw behind the scenes version mm -hmm. of her. Cause you know, the thing that I, like the thing I love so much about even just watching it is that like, you know, if T.S. was to ever step out in public, you know, she's done from head to toe, honey. I mean, yeah. the toes, <laughs> the toes are moisturized, you know, the, the nails are done, the hair, the lace is laid, everything is sickening. But I enjoy watching this really kind of raw behind the scenes of like, you know, the ashy knuckles and the, and the, and her <laughs> literally into this, like, you know, this experience and this, and her, and her content, and, you know, and, just really watching her be really on you guys. And I, I think I said this to you, I messaged you. I said, it was very hard to watch y'all all fight and argue because it's just like, y'all seem like such a close family. So it was like, I was like, no, but you know, I don't think people realize like that happens behind the scenes. We all fight with our team, you know? We, <laughs> we have to be honest. And I love you because I can tell when you're about to have a deep real moment with her, you're like, these cameras is around. Do you want me to tell you the honest truth, I think? And, <laughs> I enjoy that. I enjoy that you have that honesty with her and that I enjoy she allows you to be honest with her, you know? So it shows the love. And, and I just love that. You know, Leah, I, you know, that's what I really do like about the show as well. It's giving finally a front row view to all of our relationships behind the scenes and the dynamics because like you said, everyone just sees, you know, the polished TS, but no one until this moment ever got a chance to really see what it takes and all the drama and chaos that is constantly going on in our lives. So that is amazing. So the first thing that happens is TS is expressing her disdain to Miss Mary over her decreased in numbers and viewers because of the pandemic. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I can so relate to that. I, I saw that myself. I think all of y'all kind of saw that for a second, maybe with our following, like it was either it jumped down a little bit or it would jump to like you, you, I think everyone kind of uh, felt that. And so when she was talking about that, I was like, man, I feel every bit of um, what the pandemic is doing because you know, like we, part of our job is the interaction and is the crowd participation and all of that. And so I was feeling like when she was talking to um, her manager, I forget her name, uh, the other black Ms. lady. Miss Allegra. Miss Allegra, yes. She was talking to Allegra and I just, I was feeling every bit of like that when she was like even saying that to her. So, and I just love TS's relationship with her mother. I identify a lot with her relationship with her mom because my mom, you know, I, I come from a religious family. My parents, my father's a pastor. My mother is the first lady of the church. So, you know, like I, I identify so much with the relationship and how much of a building, like building that bridge probably with her and her mother, especially her mother being super religious. So I just thought it was amazing that she could, this episode I actually loved because like her and her mother talked about sex at one point in the episode and her mother was being extremely like real and very transparent about her experiences, even being this saved woman. So um, I, I just love T.S. Madison and her mom's relationship. But I, I felt her when she was talking about like how the numbers were declining and how like, you know, everyone, I think just entertainment wise, we all had to figure it out. And I hear, like I said, I just see the rawness in her voice. You can hear mm -hmm. it talking about it. You know, we were all nervous, most definitely so. Yeah, I do know, like, and uh, that was a very serious thing for her because, you know, she has multiple streams of income coming in, but one of her strongest and one of her strongest streams of income is YouTube. And yes, the numbers did start declining because people wanted to see that in person interaction. Everybody and their mom started doing Zoom and StreamYard and Instagram and stuff like that. So after people start seeing herself over and over and over and over, the interest does decrease and. Madison was faced with a lot of us were faced with what do you do now to keep it going strong mm -hmm. and she comes up with a brilliant idea to do T.S. Madison after dark I was totally against it Legra is totally against it the Hollywood agents are totally against it what says Dieter is about Madison after dark I liked the idea. I mean, I think that that, you know, I know that that was a conversation throughout the entire episode, kind of about her branding. And it kind of started with the whole idea of the clapping off and, or, or the popping off. But I mean, I think that that's why 
I at least love Maddie like so much. You know, a lot of my saved videos on Instagram are of her. You know, if they aren't sexy men or be pictures of Beyonce, they're like videos. <laughs> of you know, going off. My favorite is when she's like typing on the on the table and her nails, and she's like, "Girls are typing," and she. Uh -huh. and her mother tries to like uh, put a scripture in there. She said, "Oh, mama, hold on with the scripture," and it kept going in. Uh -huh. I'm like, that's why we love Maddie, though. We love her mm -hmm. for the transparency. <laughs> like she, mm -hmm. you know, I think I saw a comment recently. Actually, someone commented on one of the clips of the episode, and she said. Uh, the comments said something like, "We we've, we've seen enough clones. We like keep the authenticity up." So I even think her fan base would, you know, and I have this kind of fan base too. Like they just know you for being real and being mm -hmm. honest. And the minute they see, you know, they want to see Hollywood happen to you. They want to see you get into those levels of in those rooms, rub those elbows with those people. But if they start feeling like you aren't, if you're changing, and mm -hmm. you know, like they just want to make sure it's authentic. And so I completely. I don't know. I, I I like the After Dark. I think it's right on brand for her, you know? And that's, I don't know. I think that she is, you know, once again, Maddie is very open and she speaks about her experiences and she speaks about them so honest and real. So I thought it was a great idea, but I, I, I guess I, you know, to move up in entertainment, I don't know. I guess they kind of want you to always tame it a little bit, but I'm like, you know what you get with her. I don't know. Right. Like she, T.S. Madison, like, you know what you're going to get, you know? I was totally against her doing Madison After Dark. Only off the strength of, I said, lady, if you add another show to your YouTube channel, I am going to fucking scream. I am going <laughs> to scream. Like, how many? I think they brought that up quickly. She was like, they were like a, yet another show. And I'm like, how many shows do Maddie got? Because I know she oh, had I'll, like. Oh, I'll tell you. She has the Queen Supreme Court. She has Maddie After Dark. She has Cracking the Cold Cases. She has spotlight session. She has Beyond the Bench. She has Maddie in the morning. She has Bitch Let's Dish. She has. I think I think that may be it. I may be missing the one. Just maybe. Did oh I say my. crack in the cold cases? Yeah. Oh, I, I, I see. I I think the only ones I know are obviously the Queen Supreme Court. I know the After Dark, and I know the. Um, the the morning the morning show she does because I've actually caught that a few times and I've woken up and like been able to catch that live so I know she, I, I I've caught those ones but um, I didn't know she had my goodness I mean at the same time girl you know Maddie don't work honey she's a yeah, I mean her work, work. Her, work, work. her work ethic is just so inspiring seriously it is mm -hmm. to be that busy so one magical thing I think that pops up out of the creation of Maddie after dark is the birth of Lee. Tanya! I was oh, so, God. listen, I filmed the show, and I, of course I already know what's going to happen, but when I saw them, like, teasing this Tanya, I was in my bed screaming like, yes, bitch, come out! I, I was so hyped for TT. What did you think when you saw Tanya stop her tacky ghetto ass on the television screen? Well, my favorite part was when Tanya was actually becoming in the wig store, when they were trying <laughs> to all the wigs. <laughs> I was literally like, Girl, I literally want to go to the wig store right now and go buy some <laughs> wigs, you know. And the little orange one she had on, I was living for. And I think it's so great seeing um, Chi Chi get some like type of shine in that way because Chi Chi is a big part of TS's and mm -hmm. you know really her life. Um, but I also think that anytime, like at least my memory is, anytime I've watched any of her content or her videos a big character of her shows is hearing Chi Chi in the back laughing. Scream and holler. So it, for me, I loved it. It was like, it, it was great to actually, I think for a lot of people, it was great to actually, it, it is great to actually meet Chi Chi like and see all of, you know, how, I think how much trust Maddie does put into him, but also like how much like she wanted to give them a chance to, you know, co-host and really like be more than just, I guess, an assistant or like a team member, but like, actually I want you to host with me and I want you to, mm -hmm. You know, and that's also going to show like Maddie has faith in all of you, which I think is good too. But I loved it. I was here for it. I was here for the blonde piece. I was here for the wig trying on. And I did love seeing the character just come alive more. You know, the moment when she put that wig on and she was like, oh, hello, like very that. that was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was here for it. I was so here for it. So no, I love it. I love it. I'll be very honest. I'll be very honest. I was not here for Lee Tanya when it first came out. I was so 
over it. I was like, oh my God, what are those two doing? What is going on right now? Uh-huh. But you will see on the show when I kind of, <laughs> when my brain kind of changes. You'll see that next episode. Well, episode six. The last episode, my brain kind of changes regarding Lee Tanya. I'm very happy for my sister Chi Chi. I'm very glad that she has been given this opportunity to get a character and like flesh it out. And like I've been talking to her about some ideas on what she can do to kind of expand the Lee Tanya universe. So I'm very excited to see what Chi Chi does with it. And please make sure that they don't shave the mustache and they don't shave the armpit hair. I love both of them. <laughs> Lee Tanya. Tanya is got hello. We all got a little, you know, female cousin of ours. If mm-hmm. I got the mustache and the arm, and you just love them for it. So I was like, keep it, keep it. <laughs> I was like, you know, I don't get me wrong. I love. I always say, you know, I love glamour drag. That's what I grew mm-hmm. up on. I I like being glamorous, but that's me. I don't expect that out of every other person mm-hmm. who does drag or wants to play with, you know, whatever. So I. I always, and I even tell a lot of queens that here in the city of Chicago, you know, they tell me, I don't want to shave my chest. I don't want to do, I'm like, don't, you know, like if you, if that's a part of your character and who you honestly are, do it. So yeah, I think Lee Tanya needs to keep the mustache and the armpit hair. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. So here we go. So we kind of skipped over a moment. Libra and Madison have a very intense moment where Libra's like, bitch, what are you doing? What is going on? This is not what we talked about. This is not what the Hollywood people want. And Madison is like, well, bitch, this is me. Take it or leave it. They can kick rocks. And do you want to kick them behind them? I was slightly gagging because I've never seen Madison be that um, villainess towards Ms. Lerger. Like, you know, she's very nice when it comes to Ms. Lerger. So seeing them have that intense moment and seeing Lerger stand her ground, I was like, yes, ma'am, Ms. Lerger, let this bitch have it. Because Madison mm-hmm. will test your pussy. She will test your pussy. And, oh. I think she's, and I think she's like, well, how far can I go? So it's important if you want to gain, in my opinion, Madison's respect, you must stand up to her. And that's what Ms. Lerger did. What did you think about that intense moment between them two? Oh, that was intense. I I was happy that Madison stood her ground because I think that that is, like I said, once again, it's a big problem within entertainment that if you're known for being authentic and transparent or just honest, um, you know, as you move up, as you get into those rooms with those, you know, people moving up in the echelon, whatever um, they do, they want you to change and they want you to like, you know, sometimes tone it down or push back a little bit. And I love that she... I love that. Once again, it's like another reason why I love Madison, because she just stood her ground and she really said, I'm not going to change. Like I've gotten to. And and she really made a really good point when she said, I got to this part right here, basically filming this show, like telling my story. I got to this part right here by being myself. And I just I was like, yes, because, you know, I personally don't have, you know, I have like some connections with managers and people who, you know, look out for me in this industry. But I don't it's the one reason I don't have a manager is because I feel that every experience I've had with a manager, they really wanted to take me and try to change me into something that I'm just not, you know, not, mm-hmm. it's not in your risk for me. So I really, once again, connected with how Madison stood up for herself. And I love that Allegra even, you know, there was a moment where even like Madison was like, you know, I know you probably mad at me for being honest with you, but I'm, I'm you know, I'm not going, I'm always keep it funky with you. And I, and you could tell Lecker kind of gave her that like, you know, I know I love you basically. And it was great to like see, it's just great to see like, I think especially after like quarantine and COVID, it made a lot of people within entertainment think about how they, you know, mm-hmm. what they got there. And I just love the fact that once again, like Madison is just not giving in. She's like, no. Mm-mm. And I'm not like y'all. I, you know, if y'all want like a really bunt, to, like a buttoned up, um, this is. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, you know, y'all can go out and find her. There, there are plenty of, and I don't know if this is off the cusp to say, but I'm sure Madison in her mind, she's like, look, there are plenty of other trans beautiful women who will keep it together and mold to what you want. But I'm not doing it, and I just uh-huh. respect that. I really respect mm-hmm. that. So. You hit the nail on the head. You hit the, yeah. you hit the nail on the head. I mean, and, and, no, no, and I know exactly. You know that. I think that's the thing that I really liked about watching this show is there's just so many things I identify with with what she's talking about. And like I said, it's great to see these like raw conversations, especially from someone like her, because you don't. I think people just see the fabulous 
ness of TS and they really don't see all the hard work and they don't see like conversations like that that have to be had to, mm -hmm. you know, for, with a manager to basically like hold her ground and say, I'm not going to move. Like, I'm not going to change. Like, if mm -hmm. you don't like it, there's the door to it. I was shocked she even said that to her. Like, if you got a problem, then you can leave. And I was like, I said, ah! You know, like you can tell Allegra loves her and Allegra has like, you know, I'm sure you're in the room more than I am, obviously, Sam, but it seems like Allegra really does want the best for Maddie. So she does. It's, 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 so it's great, you know, it's great to see that she was like, you know, even like, okay, well, let me go back and talk to them. <laughs> I love that part. She was like, let me go back and talk, you know, to, to them and see what we can do. But, you know, and I mean, you know, they, let me tell you something. Entertainment puts up with a lot. There are, I think you and I both could probably exchange stories about some people within entertainment that are monsters and, and the entertainment world puts up with them. So why can't they put up with somebody like Maddie who was just really honest, you know, and loving at that? T. We cut to a scene of Madison talking to New York and that bitch says she's still gonna come. Do you think New York will ever get her ass on a plane and come down to APL? <laughs> Oh, I felt so. Well, first of all, it, I believe Maddie said that New York was stigmatized. So we oh, don't yes. know. If that, it was the man. You know, no, it was the man. Oh, really? Is I see the thing is, I don't. So I've only worked with New York twice. I mean, she was honestly, I was, I was, I grew up watching New York on television. So I was super inspired by her and put it into my drag persona. Um, but both times I've worked with her, she's been really, really actually charming and really sweet. But mm -hmm. I don't know anything else about her other than that. Is she, she, is she married? Engaged? She's engaged, but the man was very, from my understanding, and I share the same sentiments about New York Times, very sweet and very charming, just so amazing. Yeah. But from my understanding, the man was very strict about her leaving and where she was going. I don't, listen, I don't know they set up. I don't know what these or what the mm -hmm. keys are. Um, Is she in LA? You know, to be quite honest, I don't know where that bitch at. Oh, okay. I mean, and look, you She's like, like I this, whenever they show a video of her speaking on the phone with Maddie, I'm like, oh, that little background is cute. That house look cute, girl. Like, so I'm like, okay, girl. I'm slightly jealous because New York filmed the whole season on FaceTime and I'm like, oh my God, I had to get in cars and get ready and sit and all these things. And New York got it easy. Why can't <laughs> I mean she She is the queen of reality TV, so I guess so. She's a, she's New York, aka or Tiffany, aka Miss New York, honey. Miss so New York Pollen. <laughs> New York I do, enjoy the influence. I do enjoy the influence and the the fact she knows her name and like she lends that to Maddie, which I think is like such an honorable thing to do. You know, mm -hmm. I love I agree. a big name and they don't they don't feel intimidated or they know that their magic along with somebody who is just as like mm -hmm. big of a personality is because I mean, the two of them are magic together mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and they aren't the only two. You know, I've seen other people when she's hosted, like, you know, when she does a thing with Miss Sophia and she does the stuff mm -hmm. with like. Uh, Funky Dineva, who I love, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, I love when I see them doing that, but it's, it's great that you see New, New York lend her influence to Maddie, and she knows what that is doing for her. So, I mean, you know, like you said, she's the queen of reality TV, so we can't always have her all the time, but I was very sad when she wasn't going to be able to show up. And if it is the man, girl, you know, girl, don't let your man block your coins now. I, I mean, I'm sure she ain't going to do that. New York seems very smart, honey. But you don't let your man block your coins, sis. So there we go to my favorite part of the entire episode, which was the birthday party. Behind the scenes, spoiler, this was my favorite scene to shoot. This was my favorite day. This was my favorite everything because it was like, this was the first time I felt like the cameras were just following us and we were just doing what we, what we would have normally done if the cameras was not there. Like all that mm. stuff was so real. It was so funny. I was so mad. I was so aggravated. It was so heated. The argument and the blow up was way worse. And I wonder why WeTV dumbs down all of our fights. Because even the fight with me in Madison was way more explosive. Like it was way, way. Oh, you can feel when you walk out that fight. Uh huh. Oh, I could feel the heat, like the heat. This I could feel it, and I was like, ooh. And like I said, that was like real conversations about stuff. You were talking about how you had to take work from other people, basically, and. Like all this stuff. And I was just like, who like those are conversations that 
every entertainer has had to have with their team and they've had to maybe even hear those real things, you know, uh, you know, I've had to have those conversations before in the past with like dancers and, you know, in the beginning when I started working with dancers and they were very much like, you know, this is our job. It's like, it's your job. So like, we need to like, you know, help each other out. And it's like, mm -hmm. it, that's super, like I said, you had to have it on camera. So I could feel, I could actually feel it when you got up and walked out in that episode. I was like, oh, Oliver, like I felt, I felt the heat. So I could feel it. And I could feel the entire day of when you were, y'all were pulling those <laughs> lantern things. And then, um, I, sorry, I'm really bad with the names. It, uh, her writer, Craig, Craig, Craig. Was basically, uh, Craig was, wasn't doing anything. <laughs> so no. y'all were very heated and very upset. And Craig was very uh, unapologetic about not doing anything either. You could see it across his face. He was like, honey, I don't know. I'm a writer. I'm not, a, uh, you know, basically or whatever. And I was like, oh, and then I could feel like you trying to, at one point you was like, no, now I'm mad. Now I'm mad. And, and, and I got like, <laughs> it was very, like the scene was being produced uh, very well with you because you were just like, no, now I'm mad. Now it's going to be a problem. Like, no, it's going to be a blow up at some point. And so when y'all were sitting down at the table, I was like, oh, I, I could feel it just coming. Okay, they cut a lot out. So let me color the page just a little bit more for you. First of all, did you see what I had on? I had on fake leather pants, high ass Doc Martens in this zipper contraption that's like, whatever, whatever. I'm not trying to move anything. Yeah. But I was You're like, just okay. Hard, girl. <laughs> yes, I'm ready to tootsie roll. So our our producers were like, "Okay, y'all, we need y'all to get it together because this is supposed to be a team day. Y'all trying to get it together." I said, "Okay, I'm gonna be a team player. I'm just gonna get it." So I just knew when I said I was gonna go get it, Craig was gonna go get it. They cut out a whole, which you know, it's only so much they can show. But me, and Craig, and Chi Chi was going back and forth on the deck. Miss Mary had to come out and like. And like, tell us to go, like basically tell us to go our separate ways and just whatever, whatever. So that's when I finally just went over there and just grabbed the thing. Dita, I've never had, I've never had to carry something so heavy before a day in my life. And my no, will was broken. My will was broken. Oh, I, I remember you talking about that. No, those things look heavy. They look very heavy. The incline was like this. I'm wearing, Boots with a, a slight heel on it. What, what does it give? I got this heavy, hot ass mic sitting on my ass crack. Mm -hmm. I was over it. Like that's but when I came back and I was like, I was like, I got an attitude with you for real. I was I was like, yes, because I just I've broken a sweat now and I didn't want to do that. No, I could I could so sense that. And then like it obviously it escalates with like you and Chi Chi both like <laughs> <laughs> Nope, nope, nope. I'm calling it out right now. And I just, I, once again, it's like, I love, I mean, it was, it's wrong, darling. Like, who does not love that? I loved it. It was like, yes. You know, it reminded, it reminded me of like back in my retail days when I would work retail and, you know, you would have caught to call, and I worked at Forever 21. And so you would literally, uh, you know, put you would be the one that put back all the clothes, but then there'd be like a few girls who wouldn't do anything, but they take all the credit. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> like, and I just loved watching how it is. And I felt bad for Maddie because she was just sitting there like, it's my birthday, but it's like, girl, like, you have, you have no clue what was going on before you got here. So another part, they a, a couple of other parts they, they, they cut out, which aided in my upsetness with Auntie Craig was Craig was reading the entire event. And he was reading Legra. Like, he was like, this is what Legra did, and this is what y'all got going on, and this is all in it. Like, he was reading, and I was like, Craig, why are you reading? As soon as Legra and Madison walked in, you saw he was the first one to give him a hug and be laughing and be drinking and eating. And I was like, no, this punk is, I was like, no. They 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 cut out this part where me and Chi-Chi went inside, and we basically sp um spiked the punch. We were all in <laughs> Like we were lit, we were lit, we were lit. Come on, get on spike punch, girl. Yes, and I mean, it was, it was just, it, we was just dumping it, dumping it, dumping it. They cut out a part where Miss Mary stood up and was like, "Stop it!" Wait a minute. Oh, well, can I also say this? That was the other thing I was shocked about was going down was right there because Miss Mary looked like that type of like I wouldn't dare want to even. Um, I wouldn't even dare want to have start no type of conflict around Miss Mary because she just like 
you just, she just, bre- I've done her once, one time with Maddie when uh, they came to Chicago. You just can feel the respect that she demands. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and like the behaving, like, you know, I'm very much one of you. I think you could relate to this, you know, being a black child, your, your parents teach you like, you better behave yourself around other people's parents. And I feel like I would, I when I was watching the argument between y'all, I was like, oh my God, not in front of Miss Mary child. Please, not in front of Miss Mary, because you know she just, <laughs> She, she, she knows she's so damn precious. So. so then at the end of the dinner, Madison reveals that we are all going down to Miami for like some corporate, I don't know, retreat. Some shit, some shit the bitch that came up with. What did you think? Considering we're leaving off with all of us shouting at each other. <laughs> well, I thought, first of all, y'all was on an RV situation. So I was like, that's just never going to like, there's going to be some some tempers tested on that RV. Like, obviously, like that's just hello. And then I also felt like, were y'all set up for a little bit? Like, did y'all know that, that like there was a point where she pulled out the board, I remember, or like she uh, basically wanted like you guys to brainstorm. And it seemed like you guys were like, oh, this is what it was. Because I believe she said it was like a fun kind of business like fun slash business trip. And so I thought, I wonder if they know that they're going to have to be like really doing some work. They seem a little shocked, a little thrown off, you know, like I saw all y'all was kind of looking around like this girl got us up here just to do some work. And we thought we was coming down to the floor, you know, to get turned up or whatever. That's what I thought. But I guess you have to wait to see next episode what happens on the RV. The RV trip was very, it was, it's such good TV. <laughs> such no, good y'all TV. are y'all are like I'm ready for season two. I swear to God, I am so ready for season two. I am so ready for season two. And I mean, we have to also like acknowledge the fact that like this is a a show about a trans black woman, and this has never happened before. This is she mm-hmm. is really the first to get her own. She's not, you know, this is her show. This isn't a show she's sharing with you know, any other really, like, trans woman, this is a sto- her story being told. So mm-hmm. I'm ready for you too, child. I am. And I love how, like, even in between the commercial breaks, she gives kind of, like, an education about uh-huh. and about kind of, like, the statistics and the things that go on. I'm like, I'm already here for it. So I'm I'm already advocating, honey. Hashtag the T.S. Madison Experience Season 2. Uh, I want it. <laughs> we TV, you hear that? Give us a season two, bitch. I'm ready to Give get her sure. the season two, honey. Give her the season two. We want to keep seeing the elevation. We want to see how she came out of this quarantine. We, mm-hmm. we, you know, we obviously see Madison is doing very good, you know. So, Dita, I just absolutely love you, and I thank you so much for doing this with me. Before you go, is there anything you would love to plug for the children? Um, I just, uh, yeah, um, just keep an eye out. I'm really starting to get my schedule back together for traveling and everything. Um, and I still am going to continue to do some of the digital stuff. You know, digital drag is definitely here to stay. So mm-hmm. I'm going to probably continue to do digital shows. Also, I like it kind of gets money into girls pockets and performers pockets. So it helps out, you know, and if, like, once again, lending my influence, that's really what I'm trying to learn, like me being who I am. So that also I'm selling eight by tens that are personally autographed. So if you would like those, please direct and DM me. And I also have my enamel pins uh, that I am selling too, which are 15 where I can ship in the US or they're 20 shipping internationally. So hit me up on the DMs and yeah, uh, follow me on uh, the real Dita Swag on Twitter, uh, Dita Swag on Instagram, and then facebook.com slash Dita Fritz. Oh my God, it is the icon herself, Dita Ritz. And we just finished the review of episode four of the T.S. Madison Experience. That's all, folks. That's all I got for you. And until next time, be sure to parade and kiggle. Bye.